Welcome in. Reflectiations, welcome in. Hold on. We got to set the frequency right. We can't do nothing without setting the frequency right. We talk about Marie Laveau. So we're going to be diving a little bit into the difference between hoodoo and voodoo and why they tried to hide and discredit certain things she did. And I'm going to really connect her story today. Um, like I said, it's one of the lessons that need to be out there. It's a lot of information that they try to put out there about Maria Laveau. Or if you want to say Marie Laveau, however you want to pronounce her name. She's the goddess, though. She's one of the goddesses. All right, but... We're going to talk about it. But before we do that, we have to set the frequency right. All right? Before we even open up the university, it's imperative that we set the frequency right. The frequency. The frequency. All right? So, four taps. One representing the east, west, south, north, and the elements. Fire, earth, air, water. All right. So, now that we did that, the next step is to open it up with a slight meditation to just bring in the ancestral energy. I like playing this. I've been playing it a lot lately because I know that it, it goes hand in hand with, with, with the information that we present right here in the university. And the, uh, we are divine beings, spiritual beings, not equal beings. So, it goes hand in hand. So, close your eyes. I mean, put you, if you're rolling up, put it on hold. Close your eyes. You feel me? And get in, uh, pick a mudra. Pick a mudra. If you don't know too many, you can always work. Heart chakra. That's the basic one. Heart chakra. It's for your heart chakra. All right? And that's always a good center to start with. That's a great chakra to start with because it centers self. If you know more advanced mudras, do those. I will be doing lectures on different mudras, mantras, the whole nine to take us deeper into meditation. Definitely as we go into 2022.
So, now that we set the vibration, the energy is pure, welcome to class. Welcome to the University of Cosmic Intelligence. Before we get going, if you don't know it, I know a lot of y'all follow me on Instagram. On Instagram, they are shadow banning me, all right? Crazy. So, if you see posts, a lot of y'all been emailing me saying you haven't get, you're not getting notifications on YouTube or Instagram. It's okay. It's all part of the plan. You're going to have to go to the page for Instagram updates. I would advise to follow me on Twitter as well. We might start going live on there because that's a platform where we haven't did the lives yet. Um, still, every Sunday we'll do YouTube and we on here three times a week. All right. But in January, we got certain weeks where we're going to be on here um, two, four days. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because we, we tapping into the force and we tapping into the elements. So we playing with four a lot in 2022 with these elements. All right. It's a form of number magic. Okay. I, would, I just want to say before we roll into this divine download that it's imperative that we open it up with the right spiritual energy so we set the vibration right with the singing bowl. We meditate a little bit to bring in the ancestral energy for protection to make it through this lecture so, the, so that this lecture, the intent is for this lecture to raise your vibration, raise your frequency and put you more in tune with who you are and what you are, all right? And how great you are and the divinity that, that's within you. So this is just another story about another one of our supreme goddesses and the works that they committed while they were in this physical realm that we know as Planet Chi or this realm that we call Atlantis. Okay. So first, let me start by saying peace and sending the deepest of insight to all the elders in the university, those 65 and older that's within the university that's spreading the information, sharing the information, gravitating to it, remembering who you are. You're learning from somebody that's in a, in a much younger vessel than you. And I appreciate you for that. That shows humility within you. All right, to my peers, those in their 20s, their 30s, 40s, 50s, that's a whole peer group right there. We represent the bridge of connecting the youth to the elders, which is a main thing that was taken from us in this divine unity because we come from a source of unity. So the unity is our strength. Um, we are more powerful together than we will ever be apart. So although that might sound cliche, it's a, you have to understand that on a, on a spiritual level. 
all right? And us being divided, not amongst each other, but then against ourselves is the reason how we, we were able to fall so far in frequency, okay? So they hide a lot of our stories and, and things that could help you remember, like uh, Marie Laveau, I mean Marie Laveau, um, her stories, stories like Queen Nanny, Simi and Toko. So we'll be revealing all these different stories just to show you how supreme you are and that magic is a very real thing. We moving more and more to magic within the university because that was always part of the plan of the university. The first just it just you know expose to you the, the 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 material things on the physical realm and then take you to a higher form, which is to go deep within your spiritual self. And it's a state in between where you can go so deep within your spiritual self while still in the physical avatar that you begin to break boundaries. You begin to to to, to crack the matrix, or you begin to bring astral world energy into this realm and that's what they call magic that's what they call when you are able to transmute energy or manifest situations and change or alter events because you are such on, on such a high frequency all right so a lot of that has to do with us taking our power back and it starts with this type of information and when we hear stories about marie Lave uh, laveau um i'll just say mrs laveau when we hear stories about mrs laveau and Queen Nanny and Tucson L. Overture and many others who have not been spoken about. Um, Simi and Toko, individuals like this. It only just serves as a reminder of what you are and where you come from and the greatness that you transpire from. All right. So I want to get that out there. Okay. Also to the Blue Crystal Babies, those 21 and old, I mean 21 and under within the university. You know, y'all, y'all the energy, y'all the battery. And y'all doing a great job sharing this information, spreading it all across TikTok, which is bringing more of the youth into who that help them remember who they are at a, at a much younger state. Although we know age and time isn't real, these numbers represent experience. And while we're in this matrix under this light cold lockdown, we have to <clears throat> we have to tear down the system with our mind. We have to recode the matrix. We have to go go within. We have to go back to the dark um the dark the black magic, which is full of dark matter energy. All right, or dark magic. Right, they've been using light magic against us, and because they conquer certain great individuals like Mrs. Laveau, all right, and others, um, they like to hide this from us. Even when you go Google, I mean, I'm gonna read the week of her Wikipedia, but they don't really go too deep. And then in the Wikipedia, they kind of like throw out a lot, of, a lot of misinformation too. So we'll we'll talk about that today in the lecture though. But y'all make yourselves comfortable, man. Now you can roll up if your ass was rolling up. We was meditating at first. It's time and place for everything. Welcome to class. Welcome to the University of Cosmic Intelligence where a God can be a God, where you can be whatever you put, put your mind to in here. Free from limitations. I got all raw crystals today, y'all. On my raw pieces. The raw pieces, because you know, when you speak on certain subject matters and certain individuals, you want to be at a certain place electrically. Remember, we are electricity, so things like fruits, water, the sun, meditation, yoga, working out, um, and positive spell casting or the practice of positive dark magic is what helps us charge up electrically. Electrically. So today we're talking about Marie Laveau. All right. Before we roll into these truths. That we hold to be self-evident. Let's see the lies. Let's see what they lying about. So. If we go to Google. Pull out your old MacBooks. Your iPads or just an extra phone. Or if you had a desktop. Feel free to keep along with the desktop. But. 
And if you're not able to do it, don't worry about it. But if you are, I'd like everybody to go to Google and put in Marie Laveau. When you see her Wikipedia profile pop up, click on it. I'll give you 30 seconds. Because everybody's not going to do it. All right. We got 6,300 live viewers right now. So out of 6,300 people in class, I don't expect all of y'all to do it. Some, But I know it's some of y'all that's actually going to do it. So I'm giving y'all a few seconds to do that. Marie, M-A-R-I-E, Laveau, L-A-V-E-A-U. Okay, so you should be there by now. Now, when you go to her profile, the first thing you're going to notice, fuck the story. She look white. It says, the portrait is by Frank Schneider based on a painting by George Catlin, and it's in the Louisiana State Museum. She has the head wrappers that we always wore, has to eat the wrapped up. And we came in a million different complexions. We always did, true enough. But... She was not that light, and they, they 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 made her skin very light purposely because she was so powerful and so strong. That remember, they, that the whole plan has been to kill the neuromelanin. So this is why anything dark was always considered bad because it's about <clears throat> killing the image of neuromelanin and how powerful it is. Mrs. Laveau was a very, very dark-skinned goddess. All right, She had more neuromelanin than I have in myself right now. All right? As you all know, I'm not the darkest individual on the planet either, right? It's individuals who are way more normal than me, right? Because we have all, all of our, these, all these physical avatars have, have underwent some form of rape, of raping, right? From when we've been born with these people, all right? How they was trying to crossbreed with us. Those of us that they would catch doing what they call slavery. Because like I told you, 90% of us was warring with them. Only a small percentage of our people was ever captured. And the ones that was captured was the ones who they forced to slave to, to become slaves. But this is why the slaves were so quick to run away because they knew all the places where we was at. All right. So they were more tempted to run away than if they came and conquered everything. And what, why the fuck would the slaves be running away? They would run away nowhere because the, the invaders are on all parts of the land. But slaves always was running away and stuff like that because... We were getting captured. So you had a majority of us that were still free and fighting while some was getting captured. And those that would get captured, some of them would stay on the plantations and help out of fear. You know what I'm saying? And some of us, some of us would say, fuck that. And niggas revolted and ran away and came back to the majority where we were scattered out throughout the, the rest of the realm that they now call USA. But... They said she was born September 10th, 1801. They said she transcended June 15th, 1881 at age 79. Lies, okay? And I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's read about her early life. It says, historical records state that Mrs. Laveau, Marie Laveau, was born a free woman of color in Colonial New Orleans, which is today's French quarters in Louisiana, which was called which was called New France at the time. All right. So, and they said this was a Thursday, September tenth, eighteen o one. She was the biological daughter of Charles La Charles Laveau. And her mother was Margarita Diane Cantel. More lies. Okay. Her dead name was Charles, La Charles Laveau. Her mom. Her dad and her mom. Both were a part of. What we like to call. Egyptian culture. If you watch my lecture I just did. 
on YouTube about Queen Khalifa, I spoke about how North America is really North Africa. And, and back in the 1800s, the 1700s, it was considered Egypt. So the, around the time that Mrs. Laveau was, came onto the realm, you still had the time of what they like to call the Egyptians. Because this we were considered the Egyptians on this part of the plan, planet, on this part of the realm that they consider present-day North America. Okay, so Charles Laveau was considered a pharaoh amongst the Egyptians. So Marie Laveau dead was considered a pharaoh. Now, if you watch my lecture on YouTube, I expressed that pharaohs wasn't these individuals who had to be born. You know, you had to be, your dad had to be a pharaoh. You had to be born in that family, right? That's how they teach you, right, about the history of a pharaoh. But I was teaching on YouTube that a pharaoh, you were considered, you had goddesses that were pharaohs and gods. And a pharaoh was a was an, a level of spirituality that one had attained. So once you attain certain levels of, of alch mental alchemy, spiritual alchemy, master certain things within divination and and you master certain things in hoodoo and voodoo, and you master certain parts of spirituality, you unlock more chakras within yourself, you rose in frequency to the point where you can, where once that Kundalini energy reached the top of the crown chakra, it sprouts out, and you, you advance to another level of self. So that's what the whole feral helmet represented. Okay, so Mrs. Laveau grew up in that time, but remember, they got you thinking that the Egyptians was 15, 150,000 years ago. But they wasn't. The Egyptians was a tribe. They was never uh, um, a civilization, an ancient civilization. They tell you ancient to hide this from you to, and create this time lapse, okay, to make everything seem so ancient and so far away and so scattered far apart. All this was happening at the same exact time. So Charles, Charles Laveau, because they say that her dad was, he was a, 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 a mayor in New Orleans. So they're basically saying that Charles Laveau was a, was a was very wealthy. He was a mayor in New Orleans, which is why Marie Laveau had so much credibility amongst the amongst the locals. This is what they tell you in her story. All right, to try to hide because they couldn't hide the fact of who her father was, so they had to give a false backdrop. But her father being a pharaoh, all the pharaohs you had to master shaman being a shaman, divination work, hoodoo, voodoo, root work, conjuring. All right, different methods of meditation, yoga, different methods of self-discipline. That includes martial arts. You had to do all of that to even become a pharaoh. So her dad, Charles Laveau, having had him having become a pharaoh, having becoming a pharaoh in Egypt, amongst the Egyptians, when she was born, she came into this realm because you know she wasn't born. She landed here like we all do, right? There's no such thing as birth or death. We are multidimensional beings. So when she trans, when she um, not transcended. <laughs> I was gonna say transcended, but when she landed on the realm, all right, she came into the realm at a time when the war was going on, like the war still going on now. But the time period was we were dropping in frequency from Egyptians to Mississippians. All right, because I got a lecture coming up on YouTube on the Mississippians. Go watch that lecture, too, when it come up. It's going to make everything make sense about Queen Khalifa as well as this lecture today. They all kind of go hand in hand. So, we went from these Anunnaki gods, Lemurians, Atlanteans, to Atlanteans, to Egyptians, to Mississippians, then Choctaw, Cherokee, other tribes, then Black Indians, then... Negroes and colored folks did African Americans, right? Then we descended all the way down to niggas, stocks, and bitches, right? And gangbangers, which is what they call us today. So, she came in 1801. At that time, her mother. has a name that cannot be pronounced because remember most of these words our ancient our real names consider we use vibration we use all of our the all of the the vibration in our esophagus remember i taught you that the esophagus is an organ all right it's not a muscle it's an organ so we use all the different parts of our esophagus to form these clicks with our with our with our throat to make sounds to communicate all right these sounds per contain more information in the sound then 
me sitting here giving a lecture for three hours straight. That's how advanced, that's how, how, how advanced we have always been. And we use ancient telepathy. All right. So her mother's name will be, if we had to put a word for it today, high priest of high priestesses, right? Because her dad was a pharaoh. And her mom was a very, very high priest, very, very powerful high priestess amongst the Egyptians. Okay. So when Marie Laveau comes into the, comes into the realm, she is like, she getting shabbled with all the gems, all the Jews when it comes to being a practitioner of magic, of dark mat, of, of, of using dark magic, which is infused with dark matter energy. She was well aware of this. Okay. So they hide all that and they skip around there. All they say is that her, she was born to a free woman of color. And that her dad, her biological dad, name was Charles, and he ended up being the mayor of New Orleans. Okay, then they jump to how she married, how they jump through a whole childhood, just jump to when she got married. All right. Now, the reason they jump past her childhood, they don't mention nothing about her childhood. They jump straight to her wedding. All right. Um. Now let's talk about the wedding real quick. It say August fourth, eighteen nineteen. She married Jacques Paris. All right. Also known as Jacques Santiago in Spanish records, a quadrant free man of color. So he was black. He was a god. All right. Who had fled as a refugee from the Haitian Revolution in the former French colony Saint Domingue. OK, now we get deeper. OK, so her husband. All right. Was a was was a, one of the refugees that fought in the Haitian Revolution. OK, now, if you know anything about the Haitian Revolution, that's my past life. When I was to sign an overture and we use nothing but magic in Haitian, now they call it Haitian hoodoo and Haitian voodoo, all right, to cut the world off from it. But we use that to defeat them. Now, why would they mention the Haitian Revolution? Because all this was going on at the same goddamn time. Okay? And the crazy thing about uh, Marie Laveau, she was doing work over here in what they call North America, but she was also working in, in, in Jamaica. In Jamaica, she was she because because she knew how to transmute energy and she knew how to teleport. She was she was doing work in Jamaica. She was fighting in the war over here. She was fighting the war in what's considered South America. All the places of of the landmass she was going to because she was one of the most powerful high priestess of her of, of on the planet when she was incarnation here, uh, Marie Laveau, and that's because she come from the roots of a, a dead that was a pharaoh. So that's one of the you know a spiritual master. You got to become a you have to be a master. You know, one of the masters, you have to be a master of the arts, the esoteric arts to even be deemed the pharaoh. And her mom was considered literally one of the high priest of high priestesses. So when you think of a high priestess or a high priest, these are like this who you go to, you know, when like when people be in Ephah, right? They go to high priestess, right? They go to people who are, who have a divine connection to the spiritual realm that other individuals do not have or cannot attain. OK, so that's a high priestess. Now, her mom was so high. Her, her mom was such a powerful soul and spirit that she was ranked so high cosmically amongst cosmic royalty, actual royalty, that she was considered the high priestess of high priestess. OK, so amongst all the high priestess, her mom was like the top high priestess. So she came up with both backdrops. So she got all the spiritual gems. She got all the. So at a young age, she was aware of what was going on. She remembered who she was from jump. She knew her purpose right away and her role on the planet, which was to help the in this war to help close certain portals. All right. Now, they don't mention none of that. They just jump all the way to her husband. And then they mention how um, um, their, their marriage certificate is preserved in the St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans. The wedding mass was performed by Father Antonio de Sedella, and he was a priest known as Pierre Antoine. Jacques was part of, the, of a large white and Creole of color immigration of refugees to New Orleans in 1809. After the Haitian Revolution, which lasted from 1791 to 1804. Okay, so you got the Haitian Revolution going at the same time as you got these Seminole Wars going on over here. At the same time as you have... Us being looked at as the Egyptians. So Egyptian civilization is what you know it. All that was going on at the same time. But to, def to divide us and high history from us, they put this shit in different time stamps. So if you do go look into it, you still be completely confused about this big gigantic war that took place. And you can see this the same war, just different names participating in the war. So that's very important because the Haitian Revolution was nothing but who would who was 
what Orisha energy was conjured up during that? Oguns, right? Oguns. Stay with me. Okay. So, her dad was a pharaoh. Her mom, a high priest, a high priest, and her husband, one of the main warriors or refugees, if you want to call them that, that survived during the Haitian Revolution. So that lets you know who she was. She was surrounded by revolutionary energy, spiritual assassin. That's exactly what she was. That's exactly what she still is, Mrs. Laveau. Let's get into Let's see what they say about her personal life. Shit, they jump right to the death of her husband, right? Following the death of her husband, she entered a domestic partnership with Christopher Dominic. A nobleman of French descent with whom she lived until his death in 1855. Now, let's break down the story of this um, partner, this domestic partnership she in entered into with Christopher Dominic. Okay, Christopher Dominic, his family went on to start the chain line of the retail that we know today as Dominic's. Now, I don't know if they have them all over the USA, but in Chicago, we have a grocery store called Dominic's, all right? Well, that... That family line, they are all descendants of Christopher Dominic, okay? Christopher Dominic. Now, she went into a domestic partnership with him. So the partnership she went into with him was dealing with fruits and vegetables and food, all right? Because he already had the outlook for starting this Dominic's retail store. But when she was teaching him different ways to use the fruits and to gather the fruits, she was so in tune with divination that she was able to help him bring in a lot of fruit. Her role in the domestic partnership was because she was a master of divination. She could create the fruit out of thin air, basically. So this white man was using her to do that. Meanwhile, he was taking all the food and adding poisons to it because they still had enchantments and then trying to sell the poison to the people. So she ended up killing him in 1855. They just say that she stayed with him until his death. They don't tell you that she found out about what he was up to and she went to her crystal ball and put a curse on him and he threw up his entire lungs and his intestines and passed away right then and there. All right, because she she was trying to put a stop to them poisoning the food, right? Which they end up doing down the road anyway. But that was one of the first times they tried it was with that Dominic Christopher Dominic, and that was the domestic partnership she entered into that they don't tell you about on Wikipedia. They kind of just jump around it. All right, but let's keep going. They were reported to have had fifteen children. All right, they had seven children to birth and baptismal records. But these are lies. All these names they list in these 15 children, you can't find them today. You can't find nobody related to the 15 children today. All right? Lies. They didn't have 15 children. All right? Um, this is what they put out there because of they want to hide the true story of what was going on between her and this domestic partner, this, this Spanish, con this Spanish conquest conquistador who she went into business with after her, hus after her husband passed away. All right? So... And the same person she went into business with is the same person that also was work, was doing magic work against her husband. That's the, this is why her husband even passed away. So the white man killed her husband in order to reel her closer to, to him to use her for her div divination talents. And she didn't know that at first. So when she met him, she thought it was just pure natural fate. Not only was this white business partner using her, but he had killed her husband. Which if he didn't remove her husband out of the picture, she would have never went toward him anyway. So this is the true reason why she killed him in 1855 using different curses and hexes where she literally made him throw up his entire intestines and his lungs and everything from the inside out. They had never seen nothing like it before. And they try to hide it in, like, of course, they're going to hide it on Wikipedia. They're not going to tell you that. But when they mention her name, Marie Laveau, she's a very powerful name that's mentioned. And they fear the name to the point where they be like, hey, you can still feel her spirit wandering the streets of New Orleans and stuff like that. Why do they fear this goddess so much? Yet they don't tell you. They, they speak so little about what she did. All right. It's not too much about her. All right. They say in her career, she was a dedicated practitioner of voodoo as well as a healer and herbalist. Laveau was said to have traveled the streets like she owned them, all right? Said one New Orleans boy who attended an event at St. John's. Now, why would they say that? That's because she had she had the ability to, to split her etheric energy, all right? Because she was in tune with the idol. She was in tune with every part of her down to the molecule, to the molecular level, down to the cell. She understood all of that. She understood that the cell is, a, you have trillions of cells within you, and they are all electrically charged. She understood the connection to the sun, to the plants, 
everything, all right? So she knew how to split her etheric bodies. By splitting her aura fields up, she was able to project her aura fields to different locations. So this will make her appear to be at more than one place at the same time, all right? Meaning you got somebody might say, hey, I seen Marie on the, on the west side. Somebody else just said, I just seen on the east side. Somebody else said, well, I saw her on the south side. Well, I just saw her on the west side. And they're like, how to hold on? How the fuck is she everywhere at once? And she really would be everywhere at once like that. All right, she really would. She really did take on an omnipresent state because she knew how to, you know, split her theory, her aura field up. Your, your aura is a big field of energy, and you can project it many different places. All right, just like you can mask it and hide it. So by her being a master of divination, she was in tune with all this stuff, and that's why they like she walked the streets like she owned them because she had the community. Like if you didn't have carbon in your skin, like they was they feared her. Like the, the the Spanish, the elites, they feared her not only because of what she had did, but what her parents did. So they knew the gifts that she had. You know, they had enchantments that they had passed down amongst them as Egyptians that they passed down to her. So she knew all this and she was a practitioner of this, right? She basically mastered it. All right. Now say Marie Laveau took a short time to dominate voodoo culture and society in the New Orleans area. Then she became the queen of voodoo, all right? During her decades as queen, she had been asked questions about her family disputes, finances, and more. Now, when they say queen of voodoo, all right, that's just their way of saying that she she was, she was did things that they had never seen done before. So, it wasn't us, gods and goddesses, who named her queen of voodoo. It was those that feared her, these human, these human beings, all right? They feared her. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you. We're going to talk a few more stories about it. But let's just skim through what they sent on, on Wikipedia. All right. All right. So. They say. They don't tell you too much more about it. They say. She started a, a beauty parlor where she was a hairdresser for the wealthiest families of New Orleans. Of Laveau's magical career, there is little that can be substantiated. Including whether her divinations were supported by a network of informants. She developed while working as a hairdress, hairdresser in prominent white households. All right. So. Let's break that down. So most of her magical career or stories cannot be substantiated. So what does that mean? It's just a fancy word for saying that we don't vote that. It can't be proven because we don't have no facts that we're going to let y'all ask no to prove it. Even though they know it's true, they hit you with it can't be substantiated. So you don't believe it's true. You're like, okay, well, they don't really have no no pictures and no video footage of her doing this. No, so it can't be substantiated. Nigga. Air can't be substantiated. Air can. Let me, re let me rephrase that. Oxygen. Can't be substantiated. Okay. You can't see oxygen. You can't even feel oxygen. You can feel air. You feel a breeze of air. You, oxygen never gives you a breeze. That's air that does that. You can't see oxygen. You can't feel oxygen. But yet you believe you're breathing it though. In and out. It can't be substantiated. Okay. There are a million different things around you that cannot be perceived with the eyes or the ears. Only the spirit and the soul. Right? That's the real realm. But they got to hit you with um, her magical abilities can't be substantiated to throw you off from what she did. Now, when they get to talking about her working as a hairdresser, that's a fact. She did work as a hairdresser, but that was only in order for her to work her magic even more. Because... When she worked as a hairdresser, and that's pretty much, oh yeah, that's it. That's all they stand about it, y'all. They don't say nothing else. They talk about her legacy and people dedicating songs to her, and that's it. You feel me? That's it. You feel me? All right. But her working as a hairdresser, um, that's a true thing. You know, she really did work as, a, work as a hairdresser, but the reason she worked as a hairdresser is because if you know anything about voodoo, or hoodoo, uh, and, and you know how powerful ether is, you will understand why would a, why would a high priestess of voodoo want to work as a hairdresser? 
Not only not only was she able to get a lot of information from people working as a hairdresser, that's a fact. When they said she 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 was able to get a lot of information from these wealthy people that came to her parlor, but she was still a nigga to them. Okay? So they still wasn't gonna, gonna tell her everything. The main thing she needed from them was their hair. By working with people by working as a hairdresser, by posing to work as a hairdresser, because her whole posing as a hairdresser was a part of her divination work. You see, that was a whole front, like a double O agent. Up, oh, I'm gonna work as a hairdresser. So now I'm in everybody's head. I can get samples of everybody here, all these wealthy, rich, white people that's running me from the French quarters or running New Orleans. She had even put a spell in place to make them come to her shop. So this is why all the wealthy people start coming to her shop. They didn't even know it. They was under spell the whole time. Then they would come sit in her chairs and she would do their hair and talk to them and get information about them that to do her work with. All right. And then we're going to talk about why that information was important. She get information about them as well as get their hair. All right. Whether you are a human or a God, your hair is a essential part of your being. It has all your DNA in it or your DEA is in the strand of your hair. Right. Because it's, it's for us, for the gods, it's, it's full of DEA and static electric, electricity. All right. A piece of all of you is in the, the follicles of your ether. Same thing with the human beings. Even though they have DNA, all their DNA is in their hair follicle, right? This is why when you go get tests and stuff like that, sometimes they let you a drug test. They wouldn't just test swab your mouth or just get your urine. Sometimes they say, "What? Well, let's get a strand of hair." Cause goddamn it, you could you could you could swab. You could have just smoked if you brush your teeth. That shit won't be in your saliva no more after forty eight hours. You could urine, and it'll be going after three months if you ain't smoked. But your hair is so powerful that it'll take, you have to go smoke in at least two, three years for it not to show up in a strand of your hair or your ether, right? So the ether is a powerful thing. And she understood that being a master of divination, having a father who was a pharaoh and a mom who was a high priest of high priestesses, she understood all the secrets. So she used to get out, get in their head, get a little, pluck a little strand. You know, they ain't going to feel it. Dude, pluck a little strand, got you. Put their name in a little bag of got you, got you, got you. And then I'm talking about these, and these were your mayors and your important townsmen, your counselors. Everybody that had powerful positions was in her parlor. And she worked a lot of magic against them. And at the same time she was she was doing this, imagine what war was going on. The Florida Seminole War. The first one and the second one she was a part of. When the first Seminole War was fought in 1816, because the Seminole Wars lasted 1816 to 1858, she was 15 years old. Even though time isn't real, she was 15. She was a, she played a major part in that war. All right, you got to understand you had you had the Haitian Revolution still going on as at the same time as the Seminole Wars because we was at war with them. You got to see we was together at war with them. And the, and the stories of Queen Nanny, it get even deeper because. Marie Laveau used to be in Jamaica, all right? So when you're hearing stories of Queen Nanny, all right, they, Queen Nanny is Marie Laveau. These are the same powerful goddesses, all right? They're the same powerful goddesses. Or let me say this better. They were sisters, literally sisters. They both come from the same mom, same dad, all right? Using divination work, you had Queen Nanny working in Jamaica. You had Marie Laveau working over here in New Orleans, and then they would alter. Queen Nanny would come to New Orleans, Marie Laveau would go to Jamaica, or sometimes... Uh, they would be at the same place at the same time, altering, all right? You still had Queen Khalifa in California and the Californians. You had all us fighting and all these wars taking place, and we was using magic, magic, okay? So when you talk about Marie Laveau and the ability to shapeshift into her sister, Queen Nanny, or Queen Nanny would shapeshift into her, all right? So you talk about when you hear the story of Queen Nanny, they don't connect that to Marie Laveau. They make they don't tell you that they they were sisters. They was they was around at the same time, and they was basically like the same individual because of that their ability to split their etheric auras. All right, to even mask them together. This is a phase work. How you hear about something phasing together? They were they were phasing together to do shit. You feel me? This is where that whole idea of phasing comes from. This is how deep it runs. This is how powerful they were. They were casting storms. All that they were making hurricanes come across the ocean, all right, and attack and, and hit and hit these different islands. And this is before these human beings ever came up with harp. They was doing that first. Marie Laveau was doing that first, all right. It's even stories about how one time she was so so good at being at, at divination work that you had all the men and people coming to her like, hey, um. They talk about a story where it was a, a alderman or a, 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 a human being that was in, 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 in like a, a, poli a politician. He was very well respected. And his son had a court situation. All right. He had like, I think it was a rape charge or murder. But 
It don't matter the charge. What matters is what she did. They went to her. All right. Being a white man, you know, he didn't want to let it be known, but he went to her. Right. Because he knew how, how, how her work was. And and she 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 helped her, his son beat that little court situation because, you know, they still had court going on amongst themselves. They was just starting to start. They was just starting to start that that for us, you know, but she helped his son clear himself of that situation. And she did it by putting these hot peppers under her tongue and going to the spiritual forces and asking for their help. And when they was asked her, why would she use them hot peppers? Because they, the guinea peppers were some of the hottest peppers and still is as you can find on the planet. And she put them under her tongue and she did these, 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 these rituals to the spirits, to the Orishas and the different ancestral energies for three weeks straight. All right. And the reason she did it is because she understood that when one is in pain, it doesn't have to be physical pain, but in magic, right? When you connect with your ancestors, when you are on the spiritual realm and you want help, when you are in a physical pain or you are in emotional pain, they respond quicker. So like if you're if you're going through a big heartbreak or your soul hurting inside or something hurting you physically, all right, they respond quicker to help us because we are one. So they respond more to that because when a person is in pain, they give off a certain type of energy. All right. So they come to our aid and rescue. And this was she understood. So this is why she put the peppers under her tongue. And then she took the peppers. So that was very painful to sit them under her tongue. And, and go through three hour three hour meditation rituals and do it for three weeks straight. You know that it had to be very very painful for a physical pain, but but a sacrifice to the spiritual realm is to go through a physical pain. So it was self it was a self torture ritual that she put herself through, which you could do. Some people do ones where they fall straight back. All right, to let the spirit world know that hey, I'm one with y'all. I'm one with y'all. They do a drop. They do a fall. All right, to show that they give their full faith and trust. To these spiritual higher forces to step in and help them. So this is what she was a part of. This is what she was into. And this is why she did that. And guess what? She took those peppers and she set them under the judge's seat in the courthouse. All right. And the judge ended up finding, um, let, dropping the whole case, basically. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people to take that from her, they try to say, well, she was cool with the judge. Yeah, she knew judges. She knew all those people because she had work, spare work on all of their ass. Yes. But... Her going to the spirits, going to the higher spirits, she actually did that. All right. Now, when they sit in here in her story and they say that she was a voodoo queen, let's let's lock in on voodoo. They are lying right there. Okay, because she wasn't really into voodoo. All right. She did practice forms of ancient voodoo. That's a fact. But when you look up voodoo, the first thing they're gonna tell you is that is that voodoo is a religion. Okay, it's the difference between voodoo and hoodoo. Voodoo is a religion. It's more organized and, and now it has been like literally infiltrated to the point where they put a lot of saints in voodoo. So what they tell you about Marie Laveau is they make it seem like, hey, she was she was practicing voodoo and she would mix that in with, with, Catholic, with the Catholic religion. Now, we know that Catholicism is bullshit as well as Christianity, right? The Catholic Church is the ones that fucking killed Jesus. Even if he did exist, they killed them. All right. So the Catholic Church is that's what the, the, the Pope runs that. Right. So, of course, the Pope and the Catholic Church were just the, the reptilians. Right. They started all this religion bullshit. Of course, they're going to take a powerful goddess like Marie Laveau and try to say that her magical abilities had came from the fact that she incorporated ancient African voodoo with fucking um, Catholic Catholicism. Involving the saints. Fuck out of here. Fuck them white ass saints, nigga. She didn't use no saints. She tapped in with the ancestors. That's exactly what she did. She was tapping in with the Orishas. Okay? That's exactly what she was doing. Because when you're talking about who doing voodoo, you going, you, 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 you bringing in the Orishas. You bringing in archangels. You bringing in the fucking, like the saints. The saints were made to try to be a watered down version of the fucking Orishas. Okay? When they created, created the saints in, in the Catholic religion, they re they took them saints and modeled their stories after all the Orishas. Understand that the, the Catholic religion was tried was they modeled them saints after the Orishas. This is why every Orisha story kind of coincides with a saint. Okay, so when you talk about voodoo, that's an ancient an ancient practice that that was like a religion to us anciently, and then it was infiltrated by, of course, these European these these, these Spanish conquistadors. Okay, so then what happened was 
our voodoo became a lot more watered down because of that. And to branch away from that, we started focusing on our own forms of it because we were the creators of voodoo. And as we began to fall more in frequency and they started to try to enslave us, right? We started to get more into a lighter form of voodoo, which we know today as hoodoo. Because in hoodoo, it deals with just channeling the ancestors and bringing in the old reaches or, or you could channel into the God within you. You don't have to pray to nothing outside of yourself. You pray to you and you can work with different deities and you can work with different spiritual beings and archangels and old reaches and different forces. Yes, but you are a divine being as well. So you come to them with respect, but you ought to be respected as well. They go hand in hand. You are no less. You come from source. So hoodoo kept, the, kept that imagery, which I used to be in voodoo, until they infiltrated our shit. All right. So you got to understand that. That's that's why they want to say she was voodoo queen and they don't have no problem saying that. And then you go look at the voodoo and they're going to say, well, voodoo was a religion and incorporates the saints and this and that. And, and that's all bullshit. You feel me? Our essence is pure spirit and soul. We had nothing to do with these white people. We had no saints. We had nothing to do with religion, no organized religion or none of that. Everything we did involved ourselves and everything around us. So that's why when they was into hoodoo, when she was a, a master of hoodoo and conjure work or what they call root work. All right, it's, it's, it's root work because you, you're using different herbs and different roots and you're using things like candles and you're using elements and you and you bringing in ancestors like the Orishas and, 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 and supernatural forces like that. As well as you unlocking the genetics within you, you going deeper to you to unlock that ability in you being a divine being, being a non ether being. All right, so that's the difference between hoodoo and voodoo. And Marie Laveau, as you notice, like on her death day, they say her death day was... Except June 15th, 1881, but that's a lie. She never died. And they don't want you to know that because she rose her vibration so high that she just left this she left this vibration. She's not on this dimension anymore because she increased her vibration. So as you increase in vibration, it speeds up and it'll basically disappear to thin air on this dimension as you raise to higher dimension. So she rose herself to a higher dimension because in the war, she was 10 toes in the war. She was 10 toes in the war. She was participating in the, in in. Like I say, the Seminole War, she played a major role in that. She was one of the main master divinators. She was one of the main, uh, one of the main, one of our most powerful high priests doing spell work on our behalf during the Seminole Wars and the Gullah Wars. She participated in all of that. And she gave them, she gave them hell. That's why we won the Gullah War. She had, she was working spells. Then we had our, and we had our other ancestors actually fighting. We had others doing lighter magic in different places, but she was one of the main ones casting some of the biggest rituals. All right, and they will, they'll never let you know that, and then they want you to think she died, but they they then they give her a fake tone, they make her look white, say she was mixed. None of that took place, and she never died. Just like Timbuktu, Timbuktu is an ancient university that rose in frequency to a higher to a higher vibration, so you don't see it anymore in this dimension, but it still exists. All right, same thing with ancient Kemet. A lot of our universities did that. Meanwhile, some of our universities they were able to because they was burning down our libraries and stealing our books and our information. So. Certain, 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 certain groups of us started to raise their universities to high vibrations so that these Spanish conquistadors wouldn't see it, so that they couldn't find it. Marie Laveau, when she's seen the forces closing in on her, as we continue through these wars, as you getting out of, you know, because the Emancipation Proclamation got signed. And that was a whole curse that we agreed to, not even knowing unbeknownst to us. So when she's seen the forces closing in on us and closing in and closing in on New Orleans, she increased her vibration. That's why so much mystery around her death. That's why they fear her to this day because they like, man, they know she never died. They know that they came to get her and she increased her vibration and left the whole dimension on their ass. You feel me? Because they were still, they still had their hands on some of our magic as well. So they were able to be like, okay, she's using magic. She's using magic crystal ball. She's very powerful. She's using all type of elements. We need to get away to get at her. You get what I'm saying? So they was they was trying to use di different magical different magics to get at her, and they was they was closing in on certain groups of us. And those of us that they would catch, they would torture, and some of us would give away secrets and stuff like that. So they were starting to get closer and closer to reel in on who it was, like who was one of the main forces helping us, right? Because they they it was like an army. They had to pick us off and like, okay, well, who's in control of this? Who's in control of that? Who's in control of that? You know, we were we were strategic. It was a deep war. We still in that same war. So she's a very, very powerful goddess. Um, some of her spells that you still see talked about today is like her freezer spells or the honey jar spells. You might hear people talk about. She had the honey jar spells that that still float around today. All right, this these is all forms of hoodoo using basic things around you and using the elements and your intent to manifest these things. 
all right? And, and, and having an understanding of herbs and spices and, and, and um, different smells and oils and ointments and combining them together to create your desired result. So this is what she was a part of. Very, very powerful goddess, beautiful spirit, beautiful soul. And she was very charitable. She was into prosperity magic as well. So she had a lot of money. She had a lot. She, she was manifesting, all right? And what she would do with her charity, she would always give to the less fortunate. She would, she would help all of her people. She would help the gods and goddesses give back. She did all of that. And that's why New Orleans was going through so, dealing with so many hurricanes because of the, the, the curse that she set over that landmass when they made her, they made her flee using banishment spells. So when she fled, she left a curse over the whole, over New Orleans and the whole planet itself, but definitely New Orleans against these, against these, um, these Spanish conquistadors, these conquerors, very powerful goddess. So when you go look her up and, and you try to hear stories about her on YouTube and stuff like that, they don't tell the truth about her. They don't speak about how she set whole cities on fire with the snap of her fingers. They don't, they don't talk about how that whole river that's in New Orleans today, she created the one where the bridge goes over it. That whole little bay, she created that. They don't talk about she was using the animals against them. They don't talk about that. They, they just talk about the one little story where she helped one of their ass out with court. All the stuff she was doing, all the manifesting she was doing, all the creating she was doing. So that's why our goddesses, y'all got to get back to magic. Y'all are so powerful when y'all dive into it because y'all were first. And the gods, we got to get back into it too. Dark matter energy. You feel me? We have to get back into practicing hoodoo. We have to get back into root work. Just and it's not hard to do. Just just because you have the creativity in your soul. So all we gotta do is start learning more about the different plants, different herbs and spices. They tell you about them. Now you put it together yourself and you use your use your intent to write things down. You know the colors. We know the colors. We know red is the lowest vibration, violet is the highest. You feel me? So you can use your colors, use certain pens when you write, and you write your name through. So like, all oh, that's a real powerful thing. And then when you add ointments into it, and you bring nature into it, you make it more powerful. And then if you if you if you turn into a ritual where you make it last x amount of weeks or x amount of days, it's even more powerful. You get what I'm saying? So that's what you gotta really understand. You know, you don't need the moon. I know a lot of people trying to use the moon. Well, do it on the new moon. Do it on the waxing moon. Do it on a full moon. Listen. If you're going to use the moon, you could probably use the full moon because you got to remember when the full moon is turned on, that's when they admit the most what? AP, anti-photon energy. But we are divine beings, so we can transmute any energy. All the energy being amp that being pushed out from the full moon, we, we can transmute that energy because the sun is in us. So we still can use the energy and transmute it, but that's only for those who are advanced like that. If you're not advanced like that, you ain't going to do nothing but donate your energy to their negative energy to help amplify their intent so you want to do all your spells with under the sun you feel me if you don't have no sun man you can do it right in your do it right in your crib you are the sun right but if you are going to use a moon i would say use the full moon reverse their energy transmute the reverse transmute the energy that's what alchemy is to transmute it somebody can say something negative you can take that transmuter and turn it to something positive energy is energy and when you, when you get, the more advanced you get with dealing with energy, then you can transmute negative energy into positive energy. Once you realize that energy is just energy, you realize it don't matter if somebody say something good or bad. They gave you energy. So take that energy and transmute it and use it to amplify whatever else you want to do. That's mental alchemy. And she was a master of that as well. So I just want to touch on Marie Laveau and who she was and really bring truth to light to the goddess. Happy transcendence to her. She still exists. Her spirit is in still full throttle down here. This is why you can make offerings to her just like you can the O'Reaches. You can channel up anybody's spirit, even your, even your, even people that just was on this realm before, like basic relatives that they left. You can put their picture on altars and, and conjure up their energy. That's when you realize that this is death isn't real, that everything is just energy. You know what I'm saying? And the more you realize that, the more you realize how powerful you are. And if we all get on that frequency, now we we, 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 we set in motion what we want. We do our work. It's called work. All right? In voodoo, they call it spells. And hoodoo is called work. You see what I'm saying? Same thing, though. So basically, hoodoo and voodoo is kind of like the same thing. It's just that our ancient voodoo has been so hidden from us because it's that powerful. So a lot of the voodoo that you see done, doing nowadays when they involve in the saints is watered down. So you start seeing a lot of our, our ancestors turn into hoodoo, which is our way of just be getting more creative with our natural magic, our natural abilities. Remember, we have DEA, deoxyethyric acid, 
chromosomes, which is the, which is the chromosphere, many suns and universes all inside you. Thalamus gland, pineal gland, spirit and soul, etheric bodies. You are everything. I am that I am. I am everything and everything is me. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper and thus it shall be. Remind yourself that. I am everything and everything is me. Whatever I want, thus it shall be. Remind yourself that. I am everything and everything is me. I am forever prosperous and thus it shall be. Remind yourself that. I am everything and everything is me. I am forever healthy and thus it shall be. Remind yourself that. I am everything and everything is me. I am divinely protected. Creator of the cosmos. Here to help free the souls and the minds of the planet and nothing will ever stop that. And thus it shall be. Remind yourself that.